Hi guys, so I've got a new project to show you. This one is going to be a solar powered battery charger with a built in 5 volt USB port and a battery remaining display. Now this has been done before, you can find loads of examples, uh, commercial examples on the web and lots of people doing DIY stuff. But there are a few challenges in there so I wanted to learn how to do it and overcome some of those challenges by learning a bit more about electronics and I have. Uh, for the most part, it's all still on a breadboard at the moment, but we'll be working towards getting a proper board printed uh, and it looking a bit better than it does at the moment. Now, I got a lot of stuff from Farnell recently uh, to, to do this project. So I've got a Max 1 811 charger uh, and that's the lithium ion charger, it works on USB voltage. Uh, and I've got an L6920 dB step up sync rectifier. Now that's, it just steps up the 3.7 voltage, or minimum of 3.7 voltage from the lithium ion battery, up to 5 volts. Now lithium ion batteries can be anywhere from 4.2 all the way down to like 3.5 or whatever, uh, before you don't want to discharge them anymore. Uh, and for the display, I'm using an 80 tiny 85 because those things are cool, and uh, a couple of 7 segment displays, those little LED ones. Uh, so that's, that's how I'm displaying the battery voltage. Uh, it's reading the battery voltage before it goes into the step-up rectifier, so uh, it should give me a percentage display. Now that's a bit difficult to do that, it's not accurate, it's probably about plus or, plus or minus 5% accurate in reading the display, but then, you know, mobile phone batteries, you have that little display on there and that's, that's not as accurate as you think it is, it'll be at 20% and then drop down to 15 before you know it. So, it's not, there's no easy way of being accurate with battery voltage unless it's specifically designed for that battery. So what could it be used for? Well, I mean primarily it could be used to charge a phone. I think that's the reason that I started doing it was so I could leave this going during the day, pop home, plug my phone in and get a bit of free energy. Uh, but it could also be used to keep your Arduino going uh, and provided it's not using a lot of power, it could, it could power it indefinitely. Now, it's not cost effective in any way, shape or form. Charging a phone costs about five pounds a year. Uh, if you think about the, the adapter that your, your phone's using, it's, it's pulling in, what, 240 volts and using about 90 milliamps of power to boost that up to, what, 500 milliamps at five volts or something like that. Uh, so you're not using a lot of power at all, not from the mains at least, you're just changing that power into something you can use. So really it's not costing a lot, so this, probably cost around 15 to 20 pounds. So it's kind of expensive in terms of uh, the longevity of, of use, but portability and just having fun learning something, it's, it's well worthwhile. So here's a block diagram of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, you'll see on the left there are solar cells. They're connected via a MOSFET. Uh, it's in reverse bias, so it's acting as a diode, but it's not dropping as much voltage. It's connected to the MAX1811, uh, that's the charger for the battery, and then that's connected to the battery, and the battery is also connected to the L6920DB, uh, which is then uh, broken out to the USB, and then that connects to the ATtiny85 and to the display. And the ATtiny85 has got a dotted line there reading from the battery before it goes into the L6920DB. So that's basically what I'm trying to achieve. So there are a whole lot of problems which come along with this kind of project as well. I mean, inefficiencies are literally everywhere. I mean, you've got the, the solar panels, they're the constant current devices. Uh, I've got uh, three currently connected. I'm going to drop it down to two, but they, kick, they can kick out around 100 milliamps at five to six volts. Uh, and my charger only needs 100 milliamps at five to six volts, but I'm using two because the sun isn't always constant in the UK uh, and so I need some sort of backup so that when the sun goes behind a cloud or something it's still going to charge or if it's just not uh, a high sun index day or whatever then it'll still have some ability to charge the battery. So what I'm doing there is I'm getting what 240 millivolts maybe more uh, and I'm only using 100 so I'm burning the rest off um, as heat uh, via the uh, the Max 1811, and that it's got a, a 1.4 watt uh, thermal package, so it it can deal with that. Uh, but so I'm wasting it. I'm wasting about 50% of the power that I'm taking in. Now that's that is a problem. <laughs> uh, and the L6920 dB only runs at about 90% efficiency, so you're burning off 10% again there. Uh, 
but what what can we do to solve some of that? Well, I could stick some more solar panels in there and then raise the charging voltage to 500 milliamps. However, getting 500 milliamps from the solar cells that I've got isn't all that possible all the time. It's not guaranteed that I'll be able to get that much sun, but I can guarantee I'll get 100 milliamps more of the time. In fact, it would charge now, uh, even though it's not that bright and there's cloud cover, uh, with three solar cells. Uh, the other thing we could do is have a larger battery, uh, and then we can take in more of the sun's energy more of the time. But I don't have a larger battery, but you could do that. Now the other problem with this circuit is noise. The AT Tiny 85 is reading the voltage from the, the 3.7 volt, or the lithium ion battery, uh, into one of its analog pins, and then it's converting that using uh, a bunch of arrays that I've created with different voltages. Uh, assigned to them and then a percentage assigned to that. So it's converting that down and saying this is what uh, the voltage is saying and this is what the percentage should be shown on the display. The problem with that is the, the DC to DC step up converter creates huge voltage ripples and noise in the circuit. It's also on a breadboard at the moment which means there are wires everywhere and noise is, is very plentiful. Now I've thrown a bunch of capacitors in there uh, to try and smooth that out and when, when the analog signal comes in I'm using a resistor and a capacitor uh, in parallel so it, it works to some extent but you have to do a lot of software smoothing as well. I anticipate when it's on a board, a printed board, it will be less noisy but I can't be sure so uh, it's always going to be noisy from a step up converter because of the way it switches on and off from the inductor to charging up the inductor from the battery and that's so it drains the inductor and it charges up the inductor and that's how it works uh, so it's always going to have some voltage ripples when it's turning on and off but you can sort of combat that with capacitors but it's never going to be completely smooth uh, there's always going to be some variance which is why I think I see the the five plus or minus five percent uh, accuracy in the battery as it changes all the time constantly dips up and down but it's, it's roughly accurate so to around 5% and I'm happy with that. So this has been a very short introduction uh, into what I hope will be a really cool project and something that might help you guys learn how to do, make either various parts of this or, or to make your own and, and just learn something. But uh, these are the solar cells I'm using, these little tiny things here. They cost about four pounds each. Uh, they're not very expensive uh, and they suffer from the same problems that every solar cell does about losing 10% of its uh, efficiency each year and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the next video will be about the MAX1811 lithium ion charger and I'll show you the circuit that you'll need for that and the options that you can do to change uh, how it performs and, and what action it takes. Uh, so thanks for watching.